All right, so in 1.6 here, Foundations of Math 30, um, we're looking at something uh, just a little bit different than the other sections, and that is we're going to talk about what a portfolio is. So this word portfolio, you in grade 12 probably have heard that word before. You probably know what a portfolio is. But if we look at our textbook as it pertains to the financial um, math, a portfolio right here. Now, whether you want to copy this down in your textbook or not, put it on a cue card or whatever you need to do for your studying. Um, it's this, it's one or more investments. Now usually it's more, usually it's two or three. A portfolio doesn't usually just uh, contain one type of investment, it usually contains more. Uh, but it's one or more investments held by an individual investor or by a financial organization. So a portfolio, what we're learning in this section is that it's, um, uh, it's basically, it's a little bit of diversity in the types of investments you're making. And you've probably heard that term, a diversified portfolio. If, you, if you've heard of that, what that means is uh, different investments that are different from each other so that if one is not doing so well, hopefully another investment that's different you know, is doing well and they kind of balance each other out. So if your portfolio is diversified, then you have a better chance of at least you know, one or maybe two of these types doing well, even if one is not. So, um, so that's what we're going to focus on first, the, the meaning of what a portfolio is. Okay, portfolio. So one or more different types of investments. Now, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to direct you back to the textbook here to example number, oops, I believe it's number three. And the reason why we're going to do example number three uh, if I can actually find it here, where is it? Bottom of page 62. There it is. So example number three we're going to do together, and I want to show you how to use the graphing calculator and the TVM solver to do these different things. Because as I mentioned, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the graphing calculator uh, or the TVM solver online, whatever you choose to use, it's 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 very helpful in solving all different kinds of investment problems. So. We just recently took a look at how to use um, the TVM solver uh, with regards to regular payments. And I'm going to do an example here from example three where there's that type but also the types that we've been doing before. So uh, with your calculator, you do need to have an 83 plus, okay, that has a f the finance application on it. All right, so again, uh, go to apps here, this blue button, and then hit uh, finance and we want TVM solver. So you get to a screen that looks something like this. Okay, on the left that should all be the same, the numbers will be different. So let me just walk through uh, how to solve for future value basically of each type of investment in you know, these portfolios. And the reason why I'm doing example three is because uh, in, the, in your textbook on the next page there, uh, you'll see that um, here's, here's the answers that you should get. So we're gonna double check to make sure the calculator is calculating. Now they've done the work with uh, another type of application. So we're going to just double check that our calculators are working right. OK, so Jason's portfolio here. There's Jason and Malik are uh, hoping to buy a house in 10 years. They want their money to grow. And they have two different plans. So Jason's portfolio versus Malik's portfolio. And we're going to take a look at Jason's portfolio here and, and, and see what we can figure out. So as the first of three parts of his portfolio, he's got a 10-year $2,000 GIC that earns 4.2% compounded semi-annually. So this does not involve regular payments. And we first use the TVM solver with reg regular payments. So the payment here is going to stay at zero. Do you see that? There's no payments. We're gonna, that's going to stay at zero. So the $2,000 was invested at the beginning. So that is present value, OK? So you put 2,000 in there <coughs> for the present value. Now it earns 4.2% interest, and the interest up here is always per year. So you just type in 4.2 right there. It's compounded semi-annually. Oops, compounded semi-annually. So for the n value, that's the number of of compounding periods, right? The total. So this one's pretty easy to do. 10 uh, and the 10 years, and there's two per year, so that's 20. Now if if it was a, a difficult calculation and you just wanted to do it right here on this line, you could do this. You see, 10 times 2, 
and when you hit enter, it just gives you the answer. It's just like a little calculator right there. So if you had, you know, weekly for 10 years, right, and, and you're like, oh, uh, what's that again? And you could just do the calculation right there in that line. All right, so it's compounded semi-annually, so the compounding periods is not four. That should be two, right? Now, you're going to run into something here, and that is this uh, payments per year. If payment is zero, this doesn't matter because there's no pay uh, it doesn't matter how many times you're paying zero in a year, right? So that doesn't matter. Um, just make sure your compounding periods uh, matches here this semi-annually. All right, so for this one, um, what you want is the future value. So you, go, you have to go up to future value there and have the cursor highlighted onto that line. And then it's simply alpha, as we talked about yesterday, and then enter. And you see that that is solve. See the, in the blue letters there, the teal letter? Okay. So it looks like we've got $2,461.99 or 2462 So don't worry about this negative. Remember, typically in this application, anything that you are paying out should be negative. So in order for your future value to be a positive value, you'd have to make your present value negative. But again, it, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's just a sign, so you kind of know what you're doing. But alpha, enter, and there you go, positive. So does that make sense? We start off with $2,000, uh, and then in 10 years, at this rate, and so on, it grows to $2,461. Okay. Now you may say in 10 years, it's only $400. Bucks. That's, that's barely the rate of inflation. That, that doesn't, that's not very good. Well, no, it's not very good, but you don't get, you know, you don't double in 10 years very often. Um, that's just one part, though, isn't it? So uh, let's see. Does that match up? 2462. Does that match up? Oh, doesn't. So let's see again. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, payments per year for. Okay, let's see if that makes a difference. Did you try that? Yeah. Two? Okay. So that payments per year, it shouldn't make a difference because the payment is zero. Um, that, hmm, that shouldn't make a difference. I'm not sure why that. Okay, so if we solve that, okay, there's the 30-30. Payment is zero, payments per year. Okay, shouldn't make a difference. Unless... Uh, Unless these have to be the same if there's a zero payment, which I think that might be the case. So that's just maybe the way this program is working. Uh, again, this P slash Y is payments per year. If we're making zero payments, that shouldn't matter. But I know that this happens. Watch this. If I change this to four and hit enter, it automatically changes that to four. So I think these are linked. Okay. So if there's no payment, then I guess this payment has to be the same as the compounding period, which is doesn't make sense. But anyways, so yeah, that's that's the glitch there. Okay, so we got to remember that. Okay, thirty thirty. So this is that's what it should be. Okay, good. Glad you noticed that. Okay, so let's do let's do the next part here. Um, this one involves a payment, right? Uh, a weekly payment. So let's go back to the TVM solver, solver and make sure that this is going to work. So a savings account that earns 1.8%. So if you go to 1.8% there, and compounded weekly, okay, remember there are 52 weeks in a year. So 52 weeks times a 10 year period. So the number, total number of uh, periods there would be uh, uh, 520. So that should be N. Uh, present value, okay. So present value should be zero because um, they're making payments. They don't really start off with anything. It says there's no lump sum to begin with. The payments should be negative 55. So you're paying that out. And the payments per year are 52. Okay, now again, remember this compounding periods per year automatically matches the payments per year. You can change this. You can change this compounding periods per year if you want, but this is compounded weekly. Okay, so these should be the same. All right, so let's see if this one works. If we go back up to future value and hit alpha solve, we get 31,329. Okay, so does that match up 
with what they say should out 31 329 okay so there we go so the payments okay uh, let's do the final one here together and then I'll let you do uh, the other ones on your own okay so the last part of this and again when you're solving a portfolio question you take each piece and then you just add them up at the end right that's what the total thing is worth at the end what each piece would earn and then um, then you add them up so this is the final piece that we're gonna work on so this is a five-year four thousand dollar bond that earns three point nine percent compounded quarterly and then um, Jason is going to reinvest the total amount that it, that that turns into into another bond at a different interest rate that he's been offered for the last five years so you got to kind of do two pieces here and uh, we'll just do that quickly here so present value is going to be uh, four thousand uh, four thousand there and it's going to be three point nine percent so three point nine compounded quarterly so quarterly is four times per year so four times five should be twenty all right, four times per year for five years. Um, no payments, so you got to make that zero. Uh, it's compounded quarterly, so those both should be four. Make sure they match again. And future value, so do we got everything right there? So five years, 3.9, 4,000. Let's do alpha solve. And 4,856, again, the negative sign doesn't really matter. Uh, 4856 is what that grows into. Let's see, does that match up with what there? Okay, 4856, that's after the first five years. Then we're going to put that back in. And so this now future value is going to be the present value for this next half. So 4856, and we'll do negative there, 4856. Uh, 0.654713, keep all the decimal places if you can. <clears throat> the interest rate went to 4.1 and was that the same compounding periods invest reinvest yeah probably you can assume that it's the same I guess okay so let's go up the future value 59.55 okay and there's 59.55 okay so it grew a little bit in the first five years and then um, it grew to a total of this right here, 59.55. So again, with the portfolio, if you want to find out what everything is worth, um, you add them all up. So that was from the first part, that's from the second part, and then finally the third part here. And that's the total portfolio. Uh, one thing we talked about a few sections ago was rate of return, right? So the rate of return would be um, kind of what you made. So that the what what he totally what he put in here was this uh, thirty four thousand six hundred. Uh, whoops, uh, yeah, thirty four thousand six hundred here, and so um, uh, the rate of return would be uh, how much money you would make out of that original investment. So as a as a decimal or as a percent. So um, what he makes out of there, the forty minus the thirty four divided by the original is the rate of return. So that's a, that's a way that they commonly talk about you know how well your portfolio is doing is the rate of return. Okay, so what I want you guys to do right now is uh, just to go back to Malik's portfolio here, and just make sure that you can use the uh, TVM solver to get the same numbers that they get. So, why don't you take a couple minutes and just do each of these on your calculator just to make sure that uh, it's working for you and you got everything right on your own there.